All right, everybody, welcome back. This is instructor Phil Dimitratis here. Um, today, in the digital drawing class, we're going to talk about organics. And um, I really want to cover quite a bit of information with you. Just um, Organics are not that complicated. There's a couple basics. And there are two artists that I know. One I know very well. The other one, Paul Felix, is an amazing guy. I took a class from him. A couple classes way back in the day. Super nice, amazing human being. Very humble extremely talented and then the awesome and uh, Michael Spooner okay and so what I would highly recommend like we're doing before in this exercise is bring up your tone paper what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a couple um, samples of their work here in just a second I keep moving this around and um, I'm going to bring these up and I want to show them to you so first uh, sorry I was using that that fractal image last night and I'm used to their controls still there in my brain so let's start here I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to show you some images from Paul real quick and tell you the importance of what Paul did. <clears throat> um, in drawing organics, there's a couple base rules I'm going to throw at you. Okay, One, and I could have shown you all the images first and covered this, but I'll just cover it with you right now. I'm going to write them down on the right-hand side here. Okay, So these are your rules. Rule number one is you're always going to have a gesture line. Always mandatory. You're going to have a really nice curving line. I don't care if you're drawing a little plant, a little leaf, a small little flower pot. There's still going to be a huge curving gesture of line in the smallest plant to the biggest tree. Okay? Now, trees are great to draw. Okay? Trees, a little secret. Does anyone know where trees tend to grow and why they grow? Your water? Huh? Yes, they exactly. So trees have an upper and a lower category. The upper part of the tree is to provide shade for that tree. And a lot of times the, sh the trees will grow outwards and will cover the roots because it's providing shade so the roots can absorb moisture. Okay, something else to learn about trees is that usually when you look at a tree, you'll notice this. You'll notice the canopy of the tree. I like to draw my canopies like this and think of them as a shape, as a sphere cut in half. So that way I have an understanding of how that exists in perspective. And then I have the roots that come down to my tree. Now, excuse me, the I said the roots. The arms of the tree, the support of the tree that comes down to the base of the tree, the core thick part of the tree, which then transition into the roots. Majority of time, roots tend to be in the same circumference distance as the top of the tree. There's a reason for that. Now, you can break those rules, of course. In fact, there are some good examples. If you look at Angora Watt, so I'm going to, let me pull that up really quick here. Okay, so some of you that want to look at some good organic trees. I don't know if I'm going to put any of this work up for you, but if you type in Angora Watt, and um, we do an image search on that, and we go to images, I misspelled it. You will, this is um, in Malaysia, and you will see huge giant tree jungles that look similar to this. These trees that have grown down, that have overlapped, they almost look like some type of vein structure, don't they? Aha! And, and sorry, someone mentioned, Eric, you mentioned tentacles, that's right. So, rule number two about trees is that trees do something that everything else in nature does, that even our human bodies do, and this is what trees do. They start from a center mass, and they break out into what's called a branching system. The human body does that. We have a core chest. Our core chest then leads to one bone. Okay? What is this bone, anyone? Right here in my arm. Yeah. See if you know it. Huh? Humerus. That's right. It's humerus. After that, it goes to the radius and the ulna. After that, so it goes, it goes look, one core goes to a large bone, two bones, it then goes into five metacarpal bones on your hand, which then breaks down into a whole series of other smaller bones. Okay? Every other animal on the planet has the same structure in them. So do trees. So trees have a, a lot. So I'm going to draw on top of Paul's field drawing here just to throw a couple things at you to think about. So you have a mass to the tree. So if you have the mass to the tree, are you going to have one branch that comes off of it? No. You're going to have one thick branch. 
that then supports the weight of smaller branches, which then supports the weight of secondary smaller branches. Does that make sense? So, number one, we talked about gesture. Number two, we talked about a branching system. Actually, and then number three, I sort of jumped here. This isn't, this is just something to know that usually the tree canopy and the tree roots are somewhat connected because the canopy tends to grow over part of the tree. Now, there are some cases where some trees that grow very vertical, they have roots that spread out, and a good example of that would be a cypress tree. Cypress trees are seen in the Mediterranean. They're tall trees like this, but sometimes the roots are very heavy and they tend to go downward and they do grow out a little bit more, but that's okay. We're just covering some basics here. Some things for you to think about inside your sketching. So rule number one, all trees, all leaves, anything organic is gonna have gesture in it. Number two, we have a branching system that starts. Even if we took it, take a look at a leaf structure, we have a main vine that comes down, right? From that main vine, we then branch out, we might have a thicker leaf that's in here. And then from here, then we have a thinner leaf that's here, okay? So we go from one to two and then split off. And then if you look at roses, sometimes roses, then they have another branch with another little leaf that spreads off. So what does that mean? I can come back in, start sketching, put another leaf in, and then I can come back in, I could branch off of this, put another little leaf in there, and then, you know, if I want to put another little baby leaf grow in there, and I can do the same thing over and over. And then this might get a little bit thicker as it comes down, and then as it gets thicker, I can put a base on that, I can put roots then that come off. So I can even do that to my plants, right? Right. So it doesn't have to be, there's always a branching system that's existing in anything that you're drawing. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a super duper large tree. It can be a small plant. That you, I could just put this plant. What's funny is that I haven't indicated scale to you, have I? So you don't know if this, what I sketched right there, belongs in a flower pot, like so. That changes the scale of it, right? Or what if I put a human size being that big and it's a giant tree in a jungle? You don't know that yet. So in our drawing, um, eventually one thing you want to consider is you might want to consider placing something in to indicate Sorry, I drew my little tree here. So let me write down the little steps here. So we talked about canopy and slash roots, okay? And number four, we need to talk about a scale, okay? There has to be some type of scale that indicates what's taking place when you're drawing organics, okay? For example, here, when we look at the Angora Watt, what is setting the scale right here? The, yeah, the building. So if we look here, someone here is about yay tall. That's a huge structure right there, okay? When we look into Paul's work right here, what's setting the scale? That's right, the little gorillas in there, okay? So let's let's continue through. I want just remember these four things and then take a look in the drawings that you're seeing and see where those images, where these, uh, the gesture, the branching systems, canopy, roots, and scale is coming out of the drawings, okay? That way, you're not just diving into a drawing and you're like, I'm gonna go draw trees, organics. Me like peanut butter cookies and draw trees. No, you have to have some type of an approach to what you're doing. And everything that exists, whether it be environments, whether it be character designs, there's always a series of steps. And that's how the human mind functions better. If you have four steps to follow, and your four steps here are gesture, branching system, canopy, roots, scale. You have to remember those, okay? All right, and the one big thing about canopy, let me tie that back in here. The reason why I was mentioning that about canopy is this. Here's a little hint. All trees exist in perspective. So if I draw a jungle, that means I have a horizon line. That means the canopy of my tree, and here's a golden rule about trees, is to slice a sphere in half, draw that sphere, split, and then you will be able to see where your branching system is connecting to You'll be able to establish your roots, but then you'll be able to see what is happening underneath that tree. Why? Because we're looking underneath it. We can see the branches go. One of the biggest problems students do in perspective is this, is they draw the tree and then they just connect it. What? That's cheesy. It ain't easy being cheesy. It actually, it really is easy being cheesy because um, I could see under that canopy because it's above my horizon line and I should be able to see where those branches are going. And it's really simple. You can go to any numerous parks and draw trees. 
and you'll see what I'm talking about after about 20 minutes of study. Okay, so let's take a look at some more Paul Felix work here. Let's hide this. Okay, some of these studies are really fantastic. You know why? Paul used to draw a lot of these, this big, two by four inches, little thumbnails. He would sit and figure out these little compositions. So I hate to draw on top of any of Paul's stuff, but I'm just going to go over some basics here. What are you noticing inside this image, folks? What's the first thing you're seeing in here? What's that? Curves. 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 Gestures. 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 Huge gesture. Even though it's a tree and it's still... It still has a life to it. It's still an organic living thing. So it's funny because if I once said to a friend, yeah, I'm going to go do gesture drawings today. He goes, where are you going, figure drawing? I said, no, I'm going to go draw trees. But trees don't move. Yeah, they do. They move like this. They grow over time. I have to move to the tree. I can sit around a really nice curvy tree and draw it from 10 different angles, and then I have 10 different trees to put in my sketchbook. Okay? So gesture is a key rule. Okay? Uh, um, Something else you're going to notice that Paul does and a lot of artists do, okay, is, and this ties into the branching system, large shape to small shape, meaning that you're going to have a thick shape here. See how thick that is? And then you're going to have a secondary branch system that comes off that's a lot smaller inside it, okay? Same thing here. If I come up here, I might have like a thick, leafy vine hanging, and then I'm going to have smaller ones around it, okay? That creates contrast, which is... Sort of like a category, but contrast exists in everything you do, whether you're painting, doing character design, it doesn't matter. Okay? All right. So let me close some more. Let's open up some more of these. All right? And uh, this one was really small. This is another Paul, though. But look at, they're like these big vines with like the thor thorn vines, you know? Really organic, very cool. So one of the first things I'm going to want you guys to do when you start drawing is to approach your drawing from a line of action. Now... This has uh, a structure in it, which is a flipped up, a ship upside down, okay? However, though, there are still really wonderful organics in here that are flowing. Look at these curves down here. Look at that big tree branch that's coming in here. You see all that coming in here? There are lots of organics still moving around. So you can even incorporate the organics into a structure. So if some of you, I'm going to give you a base assignment, which is, I want you to draw a couple trees, a couple organics, and then it might have you draw your version of a tree house, okay, in a nice single image. But first, we'll do a couple studies first that get us there, and then I'll have you draw some type of a, of a hard-edged organic, which is just a cube like a tree, you know, like the basics of a tree house, but then have the organics that support it inside it, okay? Uh, rule number one, though, is starting with the organics, okay? All right, let's come over here. No, we hit that one. Oops, cancel. Let's hide this one here. Okay, Phil, what did I do? I hid one layer. There it is. Let's hide that. All right. Here's Michael. Michael is also another wonderful, talented artist. Uh, both Michael and Paul work together for many years, and they know each other. So look at the use of organics in here. Okay, look at the curves and the gestures. Okay, look at some of the branching systems. That you're, my, this image might not have a lot of branching systems, but you'll see a little bit of it if I draw on Michael's stuff. Look, look at the curves. Michael has this beautiful S-curve he puts in a lot of his work. And I like the way, also, this is really cool. Michael use, uses a lot of his leaves as directional pointing tools for compositional elements inside his compositions, which are fantastic. Okay? Um, and here's sort of an example of like a branching. Look at how you see this big leaf here. Another one, they get smaller, they get smaller. So he's, he's Michael is definitely, you know, look at this large, and then you're getting smaller, smaller, smaller. He's really good at doing that. I mean, Michael's a little whiz with that type of um, with work. He's a fantastic designer. Take a look at another piece here. Okay. Lots of gesture, lots of curves, lots of organics. If you like drawing like this, there's actually a lot of work for you because a lot of people draw hard edge stuff. And if you get really good, the reason why a lot of people don't do organics is organics is really hard. And it takes a lot more time to get into you. However, though, what's really cool is part of the sketching methods that I was showing you, using those, those circles or those squares, that's where this really comes into handy 
when you start doing lots of organics and thick trees and so on. Okay, but I'll put all this information up on the blog for you so you can take a look at it. If you get stuck and you don't know what to do, trace over one of these. Draw parts of this. You will learn from a master and see how he's using his lines, he's using his massive shapes, he's using gesture, okay, to create his organics. Now, um, let me see how much more. I have a couple more of Michael's stuff. Look at that. Michael did initial development on the Tinkerbell franchise that came out, all those Tinkerbell movies. So he did a lot of work on the very beginning of what the world would look like. Look at that big, beautiful flower in the leaves. Look at how the flowers are being represented, and they flow down that hill, and they curve down. Look at the wonderful gesture that's in here. Look at that. And this little curly cue right there. Look at even, look at the gesture in the leaves. You might not see real gesture in the leaves like that, but look at this. I'm saying leaves, petals. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not a flower guy, but that's all right. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at that. It's so awesome. Where's the biggest area of interest right now is the part that has the most detail, which is the center of that flower. But most important is look at the wonderful gesture that exists inside. That flower is alive. Oops, it is not dead. <laughs> it is completely alive. It's wonderful. Okay? Good designing, folks. Thinking about everything. Placing considerations to the utmost little detail. Now, here's the great thing about organics. If you get really good at doing organics and you understand perspective, you take my applied perspective course, right? Figure out how to draw. Then you start incorporating these elements into foreground, midground, and background. You then become a designer where you're designing worlds. Okay, and here's a great example of that is I'm just going to quickly, I don't mean to go off topic here, but look at the organics here. See all this? That's all foreground. That's foreground, okay? This, all this in here, that's midground. And then this right here is background. One, two, three. Three simple visual reads. So what does that mean, though? You, as students and artists, if you spend six months drawing trees all the time and look at their silhouette shapes and look at the branching structures and become a tree master, which sounds sort of funny, but it's true. If you become a master at drawing organics, organics are represented in every aspect of design that you can think about, especially when you start getting into science fiction. Who here has seen aliens? One of, my opinion, one of the great all-time sci-fi franchise in the series, right? Have you seen Geiger's drawings that he did of the alien world and the alien itself? It's extremely organic. It needs to be organic. Why? It's a creature that's made of, that has freaking acid for blood and double mouths that looks like my mother-in-law, right? <laughs> okay? That's why... You incorporate nature and all those organics and those shapes involved in there, and it brings something alive. So organic drawing, okay, plants. I mean, I, I, as soon as I have time this summer, the first thing I'm doing is I have, like, three parks I love to go to, and I just draw trees. There's one down the street from me in Yorba Linda, and they have this tree that's like this. It's, like, tilting to one side with huge branches. And then I look up at them, and the branching structures go everywhere. They're absolutely fantastic to draw, okay? All right. And... So that's all the work that I have to show. So what I was going to do is just I'll sit here and sketch for a minute or two and show you guys what I do when I start doing organics. So um, I love doing organics. In fact, I have a, let me see if I have it with me here. I plugged in, let me plug in my drive and I'll show you a piece that I've been painting and working on. And it's not finished. I have the tone for it and it's organic based. Okay, let me see if I can just quickly bring it up here. Um, let me see if I have it here. Nope, it's not there. Where did I put it? Process. It's in here. So there is an organic jungle location that I'm working on. Okay. You see the flows of the trees? You see them curving in? Look at how the flows change back here. Okay. This is a constant approach. You know, having a thick giant tree here closer 
changing. So what you'll see, something I'm doing, thick to thin. Thick branch structure here, thinner, thinner, thinner. Simple rule. I can't make them all the same size. If you make them all the same size, your tree won't feel right. Thicker here, thinner, 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 all the way back. Thicker, thinner, 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 thinner. That easy, that simple, okay? I need to finish this back area here. I, I got hijacked and started putting all this water detail in there, and but I need to finish up some of that. But this right here, see that branch? That branch I, actually was pretty wonderful. I did that with a wonderful brush that a friend gave me that does organics. It's just quick. I put it in there, put some highlights on it, finished. Okay, I'm gonna be working on this this week um, to finish up the little details, but I just wanted to show that to you. That's representing your organics and bringing them full circle. Now. One of the things I like to do is I like to work with positive and negative shapes a lot in Photoshop. So I'm branching out part of my system. And then what I'll do is I'll go into filter. So I'll paint for a little bit. And then I go into filter. And then I'll run it through a filter pass. Is that what huh? To what? OK. And, and so I like to do that because then it takes my brush strokes and, and compresses all them and makes them blend in where I'm looking at shape. So. Uh, a huge learning point for me, something I learned in the industry while working, is just everything's about shape language, right? So I even try to break down my organics into shapes and big visual reads and clumps of reads. Okay, so as you start to draw, this would be my recommendation for you, okay? Is think about the subject matter that we just talked about. I'm going to come back here and pull up this little page right here. So hopefully you wrote this down from the beginning. Oops. Sorry, I keep hitting that. Right here, gesture, branching system, canopy, root, scale. Those are key. How? Are, what are other ways we can show scale without people in a drawing? A little butterfly on the branch. A little bug. <laughs> Tim's like, props, put a big spaceship in the middle of it. Well, you could. You could have a little jungle and have a little spaceship. Well, that's, that would exist. That's true. That's scale. Other indications of scale, though, a snake. Spider, Animal. little animals, little furry chimpanzee thingy jumping around, spider monkeys, whatever it is, right? That's how you play scale. So as you start to draw, I want you to think about that a little bit. I just want to mention that to you now. So let me come in here. I'm going to start to sketch a little bit, okay? Move the paper here. So um, if you want to do a prelim sketch, that's fine. Let's say I want to, let's do that real quick here, just so you guys have that practice. A couple ways to prelim sketch, right? One is to use markers, put a couple marker tips down, right? Something I like to do is I like to come in with a lighter gray like this. I'm on a layer underneath, and I just do this. Oh, that's too light. I need to darken it up just a little bit. I just do this. This is how I start. Sorry, I adjusted my window size there. So this is how I start, folks. Look, what am I doing right now? Gesture. Gesture, that's right. I'm finding curves. I'm thinking of flowing parts. I'm also thinking about this. I'm thinking about breaking down the thickness of a branching system and looking at how it goes. And if I know the thickness, then I know how a branch, let me go a little bit darker on that so you can see a little bit more. I know how a branch is going to connect to this and how a branch might come off of that. And maybe my branch does another curve and maybe it comes this way. Now, what would happen? Does this make sense? If I have a big, thick branch there, no, it doesn't make sense. Why? That's too thin. So if you're going to have a thick branch here, then I'm going to really need to get in here into my gesture and really bring out part of that thickness. I mean, branches do all kinds of things, but this over here, you don't want to go too crazy. That's starting to branch away and look like a totally different tree. Okay? Why does it do that when I'm erasing? Now I lost my eraser. Sketchbook Pro is not the problem. It is the version of Windows that is acting up. All right, stop. Okay. So, a couple basics. I always do that under sketch. I really enjoy quickly roughing out because, like I tell all of you in a bunch of my design classes, your your first sketch is never the finished sketch, and you need to sit down and just go through. So, let's just say I have a branching system like this right now. Let's say I'm going to start with this guy, and then I'm going to think about some other things. What are the other things associated with trees and branching systems? Vines. Vines, other little plants that grow and they wrap around and then they they grow like this and then after time and wind you get little pieces of moss that hang down 
so I can wrap little things. Now, when I draw organics, look at this right here. This is a tube. You need to think of this like this. That is a giant tube, right? So it's in my best interest to try to express what? The shape and form of that tube. And how do I draw that? Well, here's a couple ways that you can do it. So now that my undersketch is done, I'm going to come back over here on a layer up above. And it's a couple things that I can do. Remember we talked about the patterning, okay? We talked about wrapping with line. So here's something that I love to do is tree bark. Tree bark is never solid. You have little parts in it that cut into it like this. So you have little parts that come apart. Sometimes it raises a little thicker and then parts that come down and raise over, okay? I have little line etching that I can come in here. A lot of times trees look like muscles, look very similar to, to stretched out muscles and arms that come across, right? So I can, let's start with hatching. I might want to indicate some of that curve that's in there. So it's sort of combining multiple items. So I might come in here and start putting some hatching going across and then make this look like it's maybe like some type of a muscle structure. Do you see that? I'm putting little lines and hatching in there. And then I might decide that if, if that's like bark in here, maybe I have a couple spots are a little bit darker. And then as this wraps around, that gets a little bit... See what I'm doing? I'm using part of my line to indicate a change in contour of going from top to bottom and wrapping. And then I can get thick and thin and wrap over. So now, then I could come in here and I could pick little pockets. And then I could do some of those little hatching techniques, right? So I can do some little circles, some organics. And I can bring some circles in here. And then as it gets to one little area, I can clump some of those circles and get them a little bit larger. And then I can make them get a little bit smaller as they re recede up. Circles are great for organics, okay? And thick and thin line. Am I doing this? All the way across? No. Okay. Am I doing this right now? No, that's going to kill it. Okay, have fun with it. Thick and thin the line. Bring a line down, go around an angle, break it off. Thicken part of the other side, break it down. Sorry, my uh, sketchbook is interacting weird with the recorder right now. It's making it pause and jump. Okay, there. So this tree not even done with it. I'm going to come over here, put some more stuff. So now I can come in here and think, okay, what if I have a, a vine that wraps around this, right? And maybe that vine, so now I'm wrapping the form. It comes over, it hangs a little bit. I might have something that comes down and sort of hangs off of this. And then that might have a little bit of leaves hanging there. Okay. See what else? Want to get these little pockets down in here? I might have a little. This might be like a little pocket in here of moss. See if I could come in here and just sort of hatch some of that down like that. So it makes like there's a little bit of moss there. And you see that what I drew here? I have this little strip right in here. So I'm going to come in here and just sort of hatch that down too. Make it look like that's another type of moss or some type of. I had a friend of mine once that said, "Just draw your trees like they're tiger sharks." <coughs> That's true, because if you've ever seen a tiger shark, they have like these tiger stripes on them, and they, they wrap the form, they show a little bit. So trees have that. They have moss, you have bark, you have vines growing on it, you have all kinds of little funguses and stuff, right? Use that to your advantage, okay? Um, then, the cool thing is, this is just real quick, if I come over here, and I switch to white, and then I could come in here, and you know, I could put a couple highlights wrapping some of that shape or form. Break it up a little. Might have a whole little area here that has more highlights in it. I like going a lot wider with the brush there so I can feel that. I can use the Cintiq to press down and get a thick line and then I can fade it off to a thinner line. Okay? Actually, I'm feeling very rusty. I haven't drawn trees linear. I've been working more in uh, Photoshop, which is about shape. Okay? So there, that might be just sketch one. Super quick, study. If you want to come under part of your drawing a little bit and use tone, you're more than welcome to on tone paper. It works fantastic. This is how easy it is. I can come down in here now. I can take a light marker, or I can do the little watercolor. I can come down to like a light gray. Let's go lighter than that. 
and I can just sort of, oops, ugh, that's not what I wanted. Let me go back there. I just use the airbrush tool. That's a lot easier, a lot more sensitivity. So now I can come back in here and look, I can darken these little patches that I had on my, I had this little hangy guy here. See that? I can darken him up a little bit. Okay. That's it. That's sketch number one. One sketch, and then just dive into it. I hate doing demos and talking, though. I have a hard time with that. Because I want, when I'm at home, I can get into the rhythm of a drawing or the feel of it. And when I'm stopping and talking a little bit, it gets a little bit harder to get that rhythm and flow going. So I'm just going to keep adding on to my little drawing here. When I draw into my shapes, I like making these little circles to feel where they're cutting into the elements. So if I have this huge root system here, I put a little circle like that because see it helps me feel where that the arm is anchoring into that. Does that make sense? So then when I draw off of that, see I have a line that indicates what's happening there. One thing that's pretty cool about some of those trees from Angora Wat is they sometimes the roots are thinner and then they get thicker. They sort of go against it because it's the way they, they almost wrap around certain shapes, you know. There. So I just sketch like a little bit of a root structure there. And I just come up in here and again just try to thick and thin some lines. Go back to the, remember the samples that I showed you when we did the gradient controls? So, you know, just think of different variations you can put in here. Like here, I like when I do trees, there's a couple that I like. I like these line effects like this. They're like curved lines that rotate a little bit. Because that does a lot to show in the gesture, especially the form. So if you're rotating them like so and you're going thicker, and then as you get away, you get a little bit thinner. Like this. It's going to help to really wrap part of the form. Um, the other thing I like doing is having what I call like a, a hard line for like, you know, if you look at an arm and where the elbow is and you have a, you know, muscle indication like where the supinator attaches, I can put like a little bit of a hard line on there and then I can sort of wrap in with shape and form. It's funny, do you see how this right here almost feels like a bicep on that tree? See this? It's like there's that hard edge there. Like this might look like the bicep wrapping over. And that looks like part of the tricep and you come off. So if it's easier, I mean, if you think of like almost drawing a hand, there's the knuckle, second knuckle, finger. There's like part of the hand, right? Here would be the upper knuckles of the hand. But instead of doing the knuckles, I get up here and I just split fingers going into a direction. See that? And it works very easily. So I just come back in, cross some little areas, get some more texture. When I get down in here, I want to see if I can get some more uh, little circle textures building up. Wrapping over part of that, creating a little bit more volume in there. Always think about shape and form and wrapping your little. You know, Marshall talks about wrapping with rubber bands. That's great. One little secret, though, when you're wrapping with rubber bands is don't keep the, the same distance. Meaning that if I do, look, I wrap rubber bands here. And if I wrap some more here, that's fine for a line or two. But then don't do the same inch increment every time. It looks horrible. You have to spread it out. So if I wrap rubber bands there, I'm going to come back here and wrap then some rubber bands around there. You know, draw looking to break the surface there. Maybe that's like a little bit of moss that's growing over the top, right?
and then um, let's just say quick I'm just trying to do this fast on the demo here I'm trying to get loose too into this I always like to see I like what I have look I have some circle texture here wrapping around then I have some different line use right here that's sort of wrapping over indi indicating that that's a another little segment there like a little muscle structure that's coming out um, actually I don't like the way that that formed right there so what I'm gonna do is erase that little line where did my little circle guy go there he is there he is I will say this, it's fun to do this digitally, it's great practice, but I can do this 10 times faster with a Prismacolor pencil. Absolutely. So once I get that done, now I'm going to wrap some more shape, little vines, right? So let's wrap. Put a little vine going this way, wrapping over, it has little flower ends on it. Well, not flowers, but little leaves, could have little flowers on it. Maybe throw another vine going sort of this way vines hang down all the time <clears throat> then I put that moss on there the more of these I do the more I will get broken into a particular style you know or feel so something else to do is this too is plants right Watch, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to throw just a big curve like this. I'm going to make a plant right here. Thicker, bring it down a little bit thinner, and the leaves are important. They, plants have a little supporting arm to come off, and then the leaf structure. So when you're drawing the leaf structure, here's a little secret to your, some of your leaves that you're going to sketch, right? Think of them like this at all times. A square with two ends to it. That's it. That's all you got to do. So you can flip that around now and draw it from multiple angles. So watch. If I draw that square there, see how I did that? And then draw the center line to the leaf. So here's the center line. It goes this way, this way, down. This one went like this. If you think of your leaves, and people get into the curved shapes and they get all lost. They're like, I can't draw it from the right angle. It's a square. And then it has two points on each end. One point tapers to a fine point. The other end broadens and connects. So if I come here, all I have to do is this. I draw my first square, draw the broad end, and then I decide, find the middle. That's it. That's leaf one. And I come back over here. Maybe this leaf is, is angling much more down. I li like that English, much more better, angling much more down. There. OK. There, there's another, I know, I'm too busy. That's what I hate about when I'm at home listening to music, I get locked into my work. I don't have to worry about talking, drawing, and then the rent, you know, doing it all at the same time. So look at what I'm just trying to simplify this process for you. So look, do you see this? Then you have to understand how the center line is connecting through. Right? So let's just add a couple more. And now maybe this one, what if I have one that goes the opposite way? What if I have one that overlaps this guy here and he's going like this, backwards? Why not? So the leaf does this. Now at the end, as I finish up my leaves from working off the shape, that's when I can come in and put little details if I want on my vines. I can make them a little bit thicker parts. I can put the lines. If you look at a leaf, line, leaves do this. They have lines that come off from the center like this. And I could add some little details if I'm looking underneath the leaf. They have some of that same detail as well. Okay.
all goes back to the structure, right? So I can keep drawing more leaves in here. I just got to break down the simple shapes. So maybe there's, I don't know, maybe something hangs down here, wraps over here, that wraps like this, and that's a vine, and then there's another leaf. That's the thing about nature, right? Nature doesn't want to be controlled. It grows everywhere. And the one thing that I like thinking about nature is it grows into, moves to the light, and it moves all around, and there's different shapes that come off of. All right, sorry about that. I had another instructor come in real quick, but. All right, so you can see what, what I have there, right? Another under sketch. And here's a great thing with Sketchbook Pro. If I want, I can like lighten the values down on that and just keep drawing, keep drawing more jungle and just keep having fun with it. So, you know, um, just think of everything in a shape. If I dissect one of my drawings, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking this in my mind because I'm always thinking that that is a tube and how do those shapes work. And you saw me when I, when I drew the attachment, when I place one of these arms or limbs coming off of it, I'm doing this, I'm figuring out, look at this guys, this shape right here, you see that? That limb is gonna attach to that. I need to understand that shape and how it attaches to there because if I don't understand that, I'm not gonna, especially if something splits into two. I need to understand that shape language. I mean, that's basically like someone's pelvis turned sideways. That almost looks like somebody lying down on the ground, right? But it's just, it's that simple. It's just a series of shapes that are represented um, with simple lines. And the rest is just adding the gesture and everything else to it. And then once I go over it, and use these little elements to wrap and add to it, that's it. Okay. And it's just about having fun from that point. Okay, any questions? I'm just going to wrap up part of this. So um, think about your hatching we talked about. If you want to get into different types of, you know, we talked about making hatching with different lines and going from thick to thin and breaking it out. Um, I didn't put white highlights on here yet. Also consider going underneath and taking that airbrush tool and just if you use a little bit of, of value, I just use it lightly. I'm worried that some of you guys get too dark. I use it to go over the vines, or wrap over, I maybe put a little bit of a shadow on an object. Anything that fades off, put a little bit of value on there just to hold it. You see how I'm doing that? I'm doing it lightly. Am I doing this? No, I'm not doing that. That's what I don't want you to do. Let the line, oops, sorry. Let the line read. Get that feel, get the softness in it. Shadows, under shadow, all right? Then once you have all that down, then come back in with your white and just put some little highlights, you know, have fun with it. I gotta admit, I do like, this is where I like Photoshop for the white highlights because then I could use different brushes that have different effects. There are some brushes here, but some of them are a little, you know, like, let me, let's bring up this brush here. Yeah, I just have to adjust them and get used to them. Paint opacity, like, the, the watercolor brush can have some cool highlights, too, on it. It's just sometimes it's, you got to get the opacity set right and get the... Anyway. Don't forget, too, in Sketchbook, you know, you can put something down and erase from it, too. Subtract if you just keep your highlights on a separate layer. Okay? Um, I'm still not a big fan of some of these, some of the other markers that are in here. But what they need is there's a way to do it. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Um, you, they're... They need to make it easier in Sketchbook Pro to create brushes. I know there's a way to do it. I just I learned it once, and it was so, like, tedious. It's just so much easier to do it, you know, in Photoshop.
All right, let me wrap that up.